The cockpit of the Russian Su-35S Flanker E erupted in a cacophony of dread. Twin missile launch warnings screamed through the headset of Major Oleg Petrov. Their piercing wail synced with the frantic strobe of red master caution lights. His multifunction display was a splash of crimson, painted by a single, persistent threat icon, a long-range air-to-air missile that refused to be shaken. I have a hard lock. I cannot break it. His wingman, Captain Dmitri, yelled, the radio cracking with static. Petrov's eyes darted outside his canopy, scanning the vast, empty blackness. There was nothing. No exhaust plume, no silhouette, just the cold stars and a feeling of being hunted by a ghost. In this moment, the invincible hunters of the Russian aerospace forces had become prey, and the decision they would make in the next 30 seconds would seal their fate and become a testament to a new kind of warfare. This tactical disaster began hours earlier with what was supposed to be a routine combat air patrol. Two Su-35S Flanker E, Russia's most formidable air superiority fighters, took off from Milorovo Air Base. Their mission was to project dominance over the Donetsk sector, daring the beleaguered Ukrainian Air Force to challenge them. Inside the cockpit, Major Petrov felt a familiar confidence. His aircraft was a masterpiece of raw power. Its centerpiece was the N-135 Urbis-E Passive Electronically Scanned Array PSA radar, a system capable of finding a fighter-sized target at over 250 miles. Under its wings hung a deadly arsenal, R-77-1, Adder missiles for beyond visual range kills and R-73 Archer dogfight. Missiles for close quarters combat, they flew at a confident 35,000 feet well above the effective range of most known Ukrainian ground-based air defenses. The Urbis screens were clean. The sky, to all electronic senses, was theirs. This confidence was their critical and fatal miscalculation. They assumed the lack of radar returns meant an empty sky. They were wrong. The sky was not empty. It was saturated with invisible watchers. While the Su-35s broadcast their presence with the powerful, sweeping energy of their Urbis radar, their true adversary was flying in utter electronic silence. 60 miles to the west, a single Ukrainian MiG-29 Fulcrum, an upgraded MiG-29MU2, sliced through the lower altitudes. Its pilot was a man known only by his call sign, the Ghost. His aircraft was dark, radar off, data link receiving only, the ghost was not flying blind. He was the spearhead of a vast, unseen network. Real-time targeting data flowed seamlessly onto his displays, fed by a symphony of allied assets. A Ukrainian 36D6M tin shield mobile radar, positioned near the front lines, provided initial track and bearing. A Bayraktar TB2 drone, loitering unseen at 20,000 feet, supplied a constant, staring infrared track of the two Russian jets. Most crucially, targeting data was fused and refined, using information from a NATO Boeing E3A Sentry AWACS aircraft, orbiting safely over Poland. Its massive radar picture data linked to Ukrainian ground stations. This was network-centric warfare. The MiG-29 was not a lone hunter, it was the trigger finger of a continent-spanning nervous system. The Ukrainian ground controller's voice was calm in the ghost's headset. Bandits are stable at Angels 35. You are cleared for spectral engagement. The operation commenced with a devastating electronic strike. A Ukrainian Bukovel AD electronic warfare system, hidden near Kramatorsk, activated. It flooded the frequency bands used by the Su-35's Urbis radar with immense structured noise. In Petrov's cockpit, the situation display dissolved into chaos. Dozens of false contacts, ghosts and glitches bloomed across the screen. Dimitri, are you seeing this? Jamming! Heavy jamming! Petrov barked, his fingers stabbing at countermeasure buttons. This was the moment the ghost awaited. As the Russian pilots struggled with their blinded radar, he initiated his climb. His MiG-29MU2, still emitting no signals of its own, rode a river of external data into an optimal firing position. He then activated his ultimate weapon, 
the ANAAQ-33 Sniper Advanced Targeting Pod. This American-made system, externally mounted on his fuselage, contained a high-resolution infrared sensor and a laser rangefinder. It saw through heat, not radar waves. The ghost slewed the pod's crosshairs, and the system immediately locked onto the intense thermal bloom of the lead Su-35's twin Saturn AL-41F1S engines. It was a perfect infrared search and track, IIRST lock, silent and undetectable by the Russian jet's radar warning receiver. Only at the very last second did the Su-35's defensive systems get a whisper. Captain Dmitry's L-175M Kibini M Electronic Warfare Suite detected the low-power laser from the sniper pod, calculating the range. Laser lock! He's lasing me! It's not a radar lock! Dmitry screamed, his voice tight with panic. The ghost's finger curled around the trigger. Fox 3! A single AM-120D AMRAM, Advanced Medium Range Air-to-Air -air Missile, dropped from its pylon and ignited, rocketing towards the lead Su-35. The D-model AMRAM is a fire-and-forget weapon. Its initial guidance was provided by the MiG's inertial navigation system, fed by the flawless target data from the network. Only in its final phase would the missile's own small radar activate making it nearly impossible to evade at close range. Inside Dimitri's flanker, the world collapsed into a vortex of terror. The missile warning screeched its final urgent tone. He wrenched the stick, pulling a high-G defensive turn, dumping clouds of flares and chaff. But the AMRAM, traveling at Mach 4, corrected its course effortlessly. Its own radar activated, saw through the distractions, and found its mark. The missile's proximity fuse detonated just feet from the Su-35's tail. A storm of shrapnel shredded the right engine and severed control lines. The mighty flanker shuddered violently, then pitched into an uncontrollable flat spin. I'm hit! Ejecting! Ejecting! Dimitri yelled. The K-36D ejection seat fired, blasting him clear of the disintegrating aircraft as it tumbled into the darkness below. Seeing his wingman annihilated, Major Petrov threw his own jet into a desperate diving turn. But the Ghost had already launched a second AMRAM. This one was launched in lock-on after launch, LOAL mode, flying a pre-programmed intercept course before its seeker had found and locked onto Petrov's fleeing jet. Outnumbered, outgunned, and electronically blind, Petrov made the only choice left. He terminated the fight. He cut his radar, nosed down into a steep dive, and ran, jinking wildly as he fled back towards Russian airspace. The second AMRAM, deprived of a clean shot by the extreme maneuver and electronic clutter, eventually lost lock and self-destructed. The ghost of Kiev watched the fireball of the first Su-35 extinguish in the distant fields, and the radar icon of the second vanished to the east. He did not pursue. He simply keyed his mic, his voice as calm as when the engagement began. Bandit 1 confirmed Splash. Bandit 2, defeated and retreating. Mission complete. On the ground, the official Russian statement would claim a non-combat mechanical failure. Ukraine would issue no statement at all. But in the combined air operation centers of Ukraine and NATO, the victory was absolute. They had not just downed a superior fighter jet, they had proven a new doctrine. They had demonstrated that in the modern battle space, a single node in a resilient, intelligent network can paralyze and destroy a technologically advanced but isolated predator. The era of Russian aerial impunity was over, hunted to extinction by ghosts in the electronic void.